Hi, I'm Daniel, and this is Ashville. After reaching 100 episodes of Asheville Weekly, we wanted to give you something extra. Well, in this video, we look back at some of your suggestions in the comments. We average about 300 comments per Asheville Weekly. Now, the most comments we've had on one is 6,000, and the least is 200. So over the 100 episodes, we've had over 60,000 comments. There's a lot of advice in there on how we can improve the setup of the Asheville business. Now, I think the best way to search is to use the word should, because everybody knows what I should be doing. Remember, this is just a bit of fun, and as I go through your incredible comments, I'm gonna let you know why maybe we haven't done them yet, or I may take some of your suggestions on board. Just to be clear, uh, we're going through YouTube comments here. Uh, we're not going through anything on Instagram and especially not TikTok, because TikTok is just absolute burials. <laughs> but I did want somebody to come and help me. I wanted somebody with a lot of experience, someone who's been in this industry many years, but they weren't available. So we've got Terry, fresh out of hospital, after a day's work as well. And we are looking forward to having a look at these comments and suggestions, which are going to fix everything we do. And by the end of this, Asheville will be a different place. And no doubt, whatever suggestions come from it, we're gonna be a lot more profitable. A lot more streamlined. A lot more streamlined. streamlined. Yeah, and I can't imagine, that there, there could be many things we never thought of. We're open-minded. Yeah, we are open-minded. We're, 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 open we're, we're waiting for these suggestions. You know, they, they might suggest something crazy like, um, build an office. Locking up the gates and just going home. Yeah. <laughs> just calling it a day. Calling it a day. <laughs> These are in no particular order and we have a reference of what episode it is. I don't know what exact point in the episode, but I know what episode it is. Asheville Weekly, episode four. Put those stones in some bulk bags and keep them out the way. Just a suggestion. I assume he's talking about the 6C that came on the train. I would have thought so around that time. So we had, what, 50,000 tonne of material in the yard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, it was about 50,000 tonnes Okay, at so one we point. had about 50,000 tonnes of material. So if we put that into bulk bags, we would probably have maybe 60,000 bulk bags of material in the yard of a material that nobody buys in bulk bags <laughs> that went into HS2 on tippers. We would have spent the next 96 episodes bagging it. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 100, we finished the bag in. <laughs> now it's time to empty it into the back of the tipper. <laughs> Thank you for your suggestion. We don't have that many bolt bags and nobody buys 6C in bolt bags. 60,000 bags. But if you personally want to buy 60,000 bags of 6C... We can accommodate that. Yeah, we can send you a pro forma. <laughs> you can pay the invoice in full and we'll stop bagging it up for you. And you can come and collect it at Asheville Weekly, episode 200. But now I've had to pile the material in the yard. I can't mix it with anything else and I don't want to waste it. In the vehicle area, put foam or something soft on the concrete dividers so doors don't get dinked. Right. right. You could always just not open your door yeah. onto the concrete barrier. I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I, just... <laughs> I mean, they're a fairly static structure, aren't yeah, they? <laughs> I mean, I don't think that when the guys here park their car, the concrete barrier sneaks up on them. <laughs> so I just, I'm... <laughs> the concrete barrier is like a game of Jenga. We just move them every day. <laughs> no, no, no. If they open it... <laughs> If they open their doors onto the concrete barriers, that's their own, as Daniel would say, that's their own that's business. That's their own business. <laughs> I don't think that's necessary. I understand why you would say that. I understand the logic behind it, but it's not something that we're going to do. Back in the yard, plenty to do. The train is still here. Why do you guys prefer to walk inside the office with dirty work boots and make a mess everywhere? I understand it's a workplace, but who cleans the office? Plastic shoe covers, every, oh my word. I personally go in and out of the office about 200 times a day. If you think I'm putting plastic shoe covers on or slippers to walk in and out of an office, you're very much mistaken. I'm gonna level with you. <laughs> I'm a size 14. They don't make shoe covers to cover my boots. And we have a cleaner who comes in once a week on a Sunday and the office is spotless until 6.31 when Terry gets here and then he trapes mud through the office. We keep it clean as best we can. You know, it's not something that we could ever keep up with. That is the nature oh, of the beast, oh. unfortunately. For the last 12 weeks, this floor hasn't been mopped. I'm gonna give it a quick sweep. 
In the archive container, you should put a motion sensor for the lights just in case anyone should leave it. Do you know what? We should, you know. Should do, we? Do you know what the worst thing in the world is? Sometimes I leave here at nine o'clock at night and it's all dark and I can see like just this line of light. It looks like an LED underneath a kitchen unit and the container light has been left on and it's been locked with both padlocks on it. And then I have to, in the rain and the cold, with mad spiders crawling all over my hand, I have to open the container, turn the light off, close it back and lock it. The bottom of the container, sometimes it comes out and it gets stuck in between the scaffold board. And then you're struggling and back healing and kicking the door. So do you know what? That is a good suggestion. I like that suggestion. The cost of getting an electrician in to fit an emotion sensor as opposed to someone just switching off the light is probably. Do you know what we should do? We should spend a lot of money on research and development. We should start a new training course and we should start an apprenticeship and we should get a man who goes around and turns off switching the lights. Switching off lights. I do agree with the sentiment of the comment. I will remember your comment at nine o'clock at night in the winter when it's minus two and it's raining and the wind is blowing sideways and licking me in the side of the face. I will remember your comment and wish I took you up on it. Nice. Just a suggestion, but would you not hire in a bulldozer for the day to flatten the stone that's beside the train tracks? Yeah, no, yeah, just, just get a bulldozer in. Like, just... We're gonna hire a D6 at a thousand pounds a day. Yeah, man, plus, plus the... Uh... Uh, plus the transport. Trust the transport, 600 pound each way transport. Yeah, 600 pound each way, plus the operator to do it. And then um, because we have, we're inundated with space here because uh, we have a yard the size of 10 football pitches, it won't get in the way of anything. And what no. we should also do is we should do it when there's a train in the yard yeah. as well. And while the LH60 tries to drive around it and offload. That's what we should do. Yeah, so we can put the bucket through the cab of the machine and I can buy a new cab for the bulldozer. We have other machines in the yard we could use to do that. We do want the yard to look good all the time, but sometimes we have to do a bit of a work around and we do always get round to fixing everything properly in the end. As you'll see by having a look at the yard when we first started and you have a look at the yard now, we do get round to it in the end, eventually. But we won't be hiring a bulldozer. The front here, we have to create a walkway. If ever there was a clear walkway, it is there, no matter how I walk. What a fantastic clear walkway. If possible, when tipping trains, why don't you load straight into lorries to save double handling? McLovin? Do you think this is the McLovin from Superbad? I hope so. I was thinking of changing my name, would like to have one name, like, you know, like Seal yeah. or Madonna. There's plenty of times around this yard, you only have one name. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> <laughs> plenty of times a day, I can assure you that. <laughs> it depends where we're offloading. And when we do it with the loading shovel, with the weighers, we can be a lot more accurate how much material we're putting on the lorries. It's not all the time people want a full load. Some, somebody comes in, they want 14 tonnes, they want 13 tonnes, sometimes they want 18 tonnes, depending on the, the weight of the lorry. Some people want 19 tonnes on the lorry. If we do it um, with the LH60 bucket straight off the train, not only that, it slows the offload down. Because when you offload from the LH60, you just want to turn around and sling it. Whereas, trying to get a tipper to reverse and sprinkle. You to be quite accurate the with the bucket. Yeah, it's like you're trying to fill a trench by the side of the road doing utility work. I get what you're saying. It's not a silly suggestion, but we don't, it may be double handling, but it's a lot quicker because remember, we want the train out of here as quick as possible. We're going to have to think of a plan of what exactly we're going to do with the material because we can't actually keep pulling it down. We're going to end up being all the way out here. Maybe you should dig an inspection pit so he can get under the lorries easier. It's not a bad suggestion and it is, an operational thing that we often do talk about. Cass, let me explain like this. We don't own this yard, we have a long lease. And if we move and we have a much longer lease, a 25 year lease, we will put a pit in. But also remember for the amount of lorries we have, we're meant to have a pit. However, we have full r and at the dealerships with Scania and Volvo. So the only bits we kind of do in the yard is small maintenance bits like Light, bulbs, tires. Lights, bulbs, tires, stuff like that. So we don't actually do like full on repairs in the yard anymore. We just do stuff to get us out of stuck and get the lorry back on the road for the morning. Could you use Raptor or Rhino bed liner inside the inside of the bucket? Maybe you can dampen the sound. Oh. I uh, think that's like the rubber liners inside the thing yeah, to, to um, keep noise down. Episode 29. Okay, what you're referring to is 
when the council were probably complaining about the sound of the material hitting the bucket. We did investigate it, uh, but the guys who make the buckets, uh, BPH, um, there was nothing they could put in the bucket that would stay and would last the test of time. Once you're offloading the train, like it's so much friction and so much impact, the rubber inside doesn't last. Now it was a lot louder then, but it's not as loud now because we're doing a type one material and a 6F5 and sand, they've all got fines running for them. Whereas at the time this happened, it was only 6C, which is just rocks and the rocks are a lot louder. It's a decent suggestion and we did explore it but it wasn't possible. The council saying that it's very loud. Yeah. Is there anything you think we can do to try to dampen the sound? Why not give the volumetric driver two keys so he can lock the cab when working at the back? Has to be safer. He didn't see you open it and go inside. You know what this is? Episode 29. This is when the driver was down in Angel. It is a good idea um, and it is something that a lot of the authorities now like to see having a spare key just to lock the cab for cab security and vehicle security. I'm gonna level with you, I wouldn't do it. Do you know what? Because a man would tell me that he lost both yeah, keys and then I would be finished. <laughs> a man <laughs> will come back at, it at, at half six in the morning. You know, it's always at six o'clock in the morning, the man is standing in front of you and his hand is in both his pockets and he's saying, I don't know where my keys are, Dan. Not he lost them, somebody took his keys, Dan, and he'll lose both keys. Next thing I know, I've got Scania trying to break into the lorry <laughs> like it ain't my lorry, damaging the door. How much is a key on a, what? What's a key, like 250? Yeah, I think it is somewhere around 250. Yeah, a key is two, it's 250 now, squids for a set of keys. I understand what you're saying, and it works once or twice, but then, like most things, it ends up coming back to bite me. Isn't it, Tesla? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ugh. And the key was inside it the entire time. To cancel the noise of the train unloading, can't you use active noise control? What? What, what? what do you want me to do? Put headphones on everyone in the area? What's he want us to do? Active noise no control. I don't, I don't. Active noise? What, in the sky? Like, what am I going to do? For, like, what? I'm not an expert, so I don't know if that's what you're okay, you're You don't not say it. You're not an expert there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on a minute. Active, active noise, control. noise control. What does he think I'm going to do when, when the bucket goes into the thing? I'm going to go ah, 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 and try and cough over the noise. I don't, like, think, I don't think Quarry Type 1 comes with active noise control. What <laughs> active noise control is he talking no, about? I don't know. That's, I, is that not, that's like the Bose headphones that I use when I'm learning to fly a plane. Like, one must, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I can't understand what this I don't know where he's going with that one. In episode 30, uh, like, I mean, I'm open to suggestions, man, and I want to do things better, but putting active noise control into the next thing you know they're saying that I'm violating people's rights and people mm. have a right to hear or something like that. I mean, maybe he thinks that Asheville's a simulation or something like, like we're genuinely here. We're genuinely not using active noise control in the skies around the yard. And anytime we've spec'd any material, active noise control has not been... Yeah, no one asked <laughs> It's not been specified on any of the, t yeah. the material, uh, so... And the wonderful I mean, thing yeah. about it is that Heathrow is next door. You will let the planes at Heathrow take off <laughs> as loud as they like, but I must have active noise control. Right, okay, fine. The council aren't happy about the noise the bucket makes when it goes into the carriage and offloads. get Yanni to stick her a square on the side of the cab to stop the magnet scratching the paint. That is referring to the roll and roll, the off, roll, and roll off and the thing. Do you know what? It's not a bad suggestion, mate. It's not a bad suggestion, but we do have a four sticker on the side of it that, yeah, that doubles up perfectly well. Yeah, it or saves, you could. It saves Yanni a job. And it always helps if like, um, if drivers didn't need to take a run up and take both hands and, and smash it off the side of the cab as if they're trying to roll the lorry over. I love this magnet. Why not have a particular person clean the machine's truck, then if they are not clean properly, you know who to talk to. Also, if it's left to one or two people, can they be fully trained to do it correctly? To do what? Clean the lorries? No, that's the driver's job. We're gonna pay extra people around the yard just to have a valet. No, 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 we're okay, thank you. I mean, we, drivers... could open, we could open a car wash. <laughs> <laughs> we could open a truck stop. <laughs> Like, as much as I want to, um, I, I want people to, you know, learn and I, and, I, and I want to employ people and, you know, but, and everyone's got to earn a living. Like, we can't just start inventing jobs. 
Like, and then I suppose I need a manager, like the head of the of the washing unit as well. I need to employ a manager to look after him as well. And then he's going to report into Terry. No, I don't, I don't think. And they'll probably all go on holiday at the same time and all have hip <laughs> replacements and I have none of them here. And all dirty trucks, probably. Have you ever considered getting a magnetic drill for any future steel fabrication in the future? Could save a lot of time and drill bits. David Horwood, uh, we've got one, mate. And um, we're about to start a really large build job and you're gonna see us using it. I'm gonna make sure I leave that in some of the montages. Just a suggestion towards your aggregate bag. Oh God, here we go. Your, your aggregate bagging, have you ever looked into the idea of using a secondhand rock salt spreader body and putting it on legs? I think the sentiment towards the comment is, is not bad. As you can see by the bagging plant, I'm a man who doesn't take the simple option. No. The money I spent on it, I could have just bought a whole unit yeah. itself and just plopped it there. But I decided to go and get an old hopper and build conveyors which are way over specified and then use my old hopper to do it. I mean, I haven't seen those yet, but I would look at it, but now our bagging plant is finished. I haven't turned it on or made a penny out of it yet, but, <laughs> but it is finished. It is finished, so it's a bit late. I wish I checked it earlier, but I would have explored your suggestion. Just a cost saving suggestion for you. If you need a new water tank, try contacting an industrial gas company if there are any gas tanks that they need to scrap. You can save a lot of money by buying an old gas tank because those tanks are changed often. I, I didn't know that. Neither did I, to be honest. Are they talking about the massive gas tanks that are at the side? I mean, there is probably some uh, space issues that we would have to overcome first. Had we had your suggestion earlier, we may not have got ourselves in the hot water we did when we were doing the 300 meter concrete pour and we ran out of water at 11 o'clock. All now I'm not sleeping because of the way I messed up that pour and I had to mess it up when Terry weren't in as well. <laughs> so man could- man That's could the only time it would get messed up. Ma yeah, of course. Man would be, <laughs> chief. Man's lying in his bed with his leg. Oh yeah, I would have done that pour. All now, like he- I think I was on holiday in Portugal that time. Are you, oh, you are? <laughs> <laughs> Holiday in Portugal while man is struggling. <laughs> Our famous water tank holds 17,000 litres of water. We've run out of water, so we don't have any water to load the concrete lorries with, so we've had to stick a hose pipe in the top of this lorry while this is trying to fill itself. You should paint the concrete, what you should paint the concrete, a sign at the entrance back. So what? Oh, you should paint the concrete a sign, oh, I think it's made, at sorry. the entrance black. It would look fantastic, I'm sure, but we do have far more pressing things to be doing around here than painting a concrete A black and outlining it yellow. I know, like we've got much more pressing important things that, that, that make much more Like money, reading like, YouTube comments and filming yeah, videos. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> like, like bagging plants that we don't turn on, like Asheville flags, like we're a bunch of pirates, like skip boats, yeah. you know, things that make us money, <laughs> what help us generate more income. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it would look good though, Cam Gunner, it would look very, very good, agreed. We're going for a bit of a brand change, but the original Asheville A is actually a concrete A. That's why it's concrete. So many people have suggested it, but I think for now I'm going to leave it the way it is because we never know where that A is going to end up. I was asked by the uh, council if I wanted to put it at um, Trafalgar Square. Was you? Middle of the square, yeah, but I just I said no. At the bottom of Nelson's column. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Replace one of the lions. <laughs> <laughs> but I said nah, it's got sentimental value to me. The rest of the QPR shirts have finally arrived. 6 a.m. in the morning. A good start to the day. If you get a tank, example, 4,000 litres and raise it on stilts, you'll create a head of pressure. As long as it's enough volume for a day supply, it can be topped up overnight from the mains. Our tank is 17,000 litres and it's got enough pressure. It's just that every concrete lorry takes 2,000 litres of water and we got five of them. So if they're on a job round the corner, no matter what we do, we, we can't, can't keep, keep up. up with what we're doing. But yeah, no, head of tanks and it's, 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 uh, it's basic plumbing and uh, we, we, we're with you, mate. The problem we have is it doesn't fill up quick enough. So when we had a head of tank at 4,000 litres, was on stilts, the problem would remain the same. And I'm also gonna have to get myself a little water tank. So I'm gonna have to put a water tank here and a pump because again, the pressure isn't enough. I'm in construction myself and enjoy your videos every Saturday, good stuff. Uh, you should build a sauna. In <laughs> <laughs> yes, should, yes, should we build, should. You should build a sauna in the yard. It has a lot of good benefits, but it also helps with recovering from hard days of work. I've got a better idea. 
what I can do is I can dismantle all the air conditioning units in all the offices here. Yeah? And in the summer, I can close all the windows and doors. And then everyone here, apart from me in my office, will feel like it is a sauna. I'm not sure that I want to go into the sauna like at six o'clock at night and me and Nathan and, and Ollie and, <laughs> and Michael Schimmel. And I'm not sure that I want to, and like, I'm sitting not sure. there with your little towel around uh, Sitting there with a towel around ourselves after a day's work, talking about crab fishing. Like, I'm not sure. I mean, thank you for your suggestion, but you know. We won't be building I think I'm going to stick with the sauna at the gym. And I'm more of a steam man anyway. I prefer a steam room to a sauna. Daniel, just a suggestion with the road trip, but you should try a tender for council contracts for cleaning the streets in your local area. J Josh, um, I'm actually going to do that. But something about the sweeper, Josh, it's not a Euro 6. So I have to be very careful where I send it. Otherwise, I'm paying 100 squids a day to the uh, low emission zones. I have tried to go out um, to a few people and see if they wanted us to clean their yards, but we don't have a full-time person on the road sweeper. We put a job out for someone to do it part-time because we thought maybe uh, somebody who's semi-retired or something might like to come in and just do the road sweeper for a few days a week. We thought wrong. Nobody wanted to do that, but it's definitely something that I would like to do and that we're going to look at doing. And just to caveat that, I know Asheville is the college for everybody who wants to learn and break things, but somebody who has already driven a sweeper, and I don't mean round the yard, I mean on the road, somebody who's experienced, who's already driven a sweeper, please. Yeah. No one who previously did Amazon deliveries or did the Feel Pizza Hut. Sainsbury's. Yeah, or Pizza Hut deliveries on a moped. It doesn't qualify you to drive a road sweeper. Thank you. We've got the road sweeper cleaning the road. It rained yesterday, so it's a bit dirty. So we're going to get the road nice and tidy so the lorries don't drag anything out onto the street. Why don't you pay your workers to drive their cars to, to site? The reason why we can't do that is because as part of our operator's license, what everybody who runs lorries needs, you have to park your lorries at your operating center every night. So at the end of the night, the DVSA could decide to land in here and the lorries that are registered here, they have to be parked in the yard. Plus, I can't be asking people to drive their personal cars to building sites. Can't do that. They come to work, they park in the car park, they go out in the vehicle, they do their job and they come back at the end of the day. There's other issues surrounding working time and things like that. Commuting to a single place of work counts towards your working time and things like that. This suggestion has already been made, but hopefully this is helpful for your tight space job. What about one of the small ride-on articulated dump trucks? You know, the, the, the trouble with, with the, the articulated dump trucks and doing all of this, it's, it's an ongoing theme what we don't talk about. No one wants to pay for it, that's why. Mm. People would rather see 10 men break their back with shovels, wheelbarrows, running up scaffold board to try and tip into a skip. They'd rather get a fine from the council for putting the skip in the road when it's not meant to be. They'd rather put the muck on the road on top of ply and then pay someone to jet wash the road. What you're saying does work with the small dump trucks, but when you present that to someone before you do the job, they don't want to pay it. That's why we don't do it. But I can see how your suggestion would work, Aiden. It's 2.3. No chance. no chance. Nothing fits through 2.3. Nope. Why don't you use some form of suction machine to offload the trails? I mean, it'll be more efficient as you'll be able to get every last bit of material. Just an idea, though. I think they mean trains. I mean... No, it's not. I, I mean... You the got practicality is around. You've got a million quid lying around. Yeah. Like the VACX machine can suck up mm -hmm. let, probably, let, let, probably let, let, 20 tons of material. It's got to go and tip and then come back. It's, let me give you an example like about a suction machine. Those vacuum machines, which are on an eight by four chassis, and I think the chassis is an upgraded one like it is on the concrete lorries. That truck is 450,000 pounds and it can go to a job and just about suck up wet muck. And if it turns to clay, you're not going to be able to suck it up. And then when I suck it up, you've then got to go and tip it. So it wouldn't save us any time and it would be far more expensive. And the internals of it would be completely destroyed with the size of the rocks that are coming through. And then they're going to bang about on the inside. A bit like when your mum used to hoover your marbles and you used to hit them going dum, 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 inside and your pieces of Lego. And then you learn you should clean away your stuff when your mum tells you to or you will lose it. You have to scoop out as much as you can. So you go this way, this way, this way, this way, and then you go back that way. Then you need to drop the bucket in and use the bucket to clean the bottom of the carriage. Why don't you put gravel at your parking lot 
uh, would look nicer and drier to walk on. We don't put gravel in the parking lot because it's only really needed in the winter and the tyres will take the gravel out when the guys are leaving. Really, Once it gets wet, it'll get pushed into the floor. It'll right? get pushed into the floor and it'll disappear. Eventually, we're going to concrete the car park. It does get messy here sometimes, but with the road sweeper, as long as we keep the road clean, they tend not to drag mud into there. And we deliberately design the yard so your car doesn't have to drive around the yard and it doesn't have to go around to the back. It's like the, it's like the quickest point of entry, yeah, isn't it? Place. Where you come into the yard. So yeah, we'd prefer to concrete the, the car park and we'll get around to it. What's jackboard? Why does it clad the plywood? And why don't you guys use sheet rock? Jackboard's new to me as well. Because I always used to use something called Hardy Backer, what's a cement based board. So that would go on the ply or the WBP, and that would be our base for tiling. It's a lot better to use in, in wet areas. Um, so if you use it on top of the ply, uh, it, it's a better bond for the adhesive and the tiles. But I don't know what sheetrock is. So now that you've mentioned it, I'm gonna check out what sheetrock is. Finally, in this area, you can see the jack board is on the wall here. Why don't you guys have a building? Right, okay. That's it. No, that's it, all right, okay. Well, um, why don't we have a building? Why don't we have a building? All right. We, we don't have a building. Uh, we don't own this yard, we lease it. Um, containers are normal in our industry for people to work from. Everything's modular in containers in case we need to move or so we can stack things up as high as possible or so we can evolve and make things happen. You never know. I could come in here tomorrow and decide that everything in this yard is going to move and there's a better way of making space. You got to remember, when you look at a yard, the money you're paying is per square foot. Every inch in this yard costs money. So having a building on it sometimes doesn't make sense. Sometimes it's better if you can adapt and duck and dive and make space and move things. And the landlord hasn't built a building. For us to build a building somewhere, we need to own the land or demolish Terry's house and build something in its place. Yeah. We've got container offices, they're, they're, they're fine for now. I don't know what's wrong with my office, my office is lovely. If you do go into some people's yards, like if you go into Michael O'Donovan's yard, he has a building, but that building, if such a thing is possible, is even older than him. Like that building was there when he got there. He never built that building. He just took the sign off the front of it that said, I don't know, Hovis Bread. It was probably a factory or something. And he put an O'Donovan sign. Do you know people who have buildings and their buildings are fully air conditioned, have full CCTV, have televisions, have expensive chairs that Terry loves sitting in, have fiber optic thousand up, thousand down internet. And look at this office. If their buildings are better equipped than our containers, let me know in the comments. The musical chairs we've been playing in here is nearly done. We've done the big move. Construction and videography have swapped. Why don't you install code locks instead of keys? On what exactly? Yeah, I don't know, on what? Do you have a code lock on your front door at your house? I mean, here's the thing, man. If I give everyone keys, they lose them. If I put a code, they'll forget the code. <laughs> so either way, we'll be locked out. Yeah. Some of the doors do have code locks on them here. The kitchen door does, and the men's what, the toilet door does. Yeah, the kitchen and door. And I've had several phone calls at half past five in the morning saying, what's the key to the code to the door, bud? <laughs> oh, really? So yeah, we do have some code locks, yeah. <laughs> we do, but generally, keys are, I don't know, they're a better option, aren't they? There's my key. There's their key. I, ca I cannot sell someone a flat for this amount of money with a key to not even open the door properly. Back to the shop again, more wasting time. Why don't you just close the valve on the feed pipe and add an external side entry feed pipe um, with the float valve to easy maintenance? I assume it's the water you tower, are talking about the problem that we had with the water tower, and that is actually how we fixed it. Chris ran another pipe on the, on the outside of it and the water tank is working perfectly and it doesn't overflow anymore. So Mitch Oaks, Your rude suggestion boy, is serious. Your suggestion is serious and we took you up on the suggestion. So great minds think alike. I believe there's a hole on the fill pipe somewhere around the middle or somewhere near the bottom. And we keep having to turn this off manually, which shouldn't happen. Daniel, in London, it's going to be a diesel charge everywhere of £12.50. The zones will be cancelled and every lorry going out of London coming in will cost you slash customers extra. Why don't you invest in an electric lorry? I don't have £350,000 lying around 
we don't have the electrical infrastructure in place. We need to upgrade the power coming to the yard because, of course, I want the lorry to charge in 20 minutes. They don't make an 8 before um, version of it yet that can be used as a tipper or a grab lorry. Yeah, the, the, the vehicles that we run, we don't run box lorries. Do yeah, we, we so, don't so run box there lorries doing multi-drop. There is multi technology there so, to, to power the vehicles that we run. Just think about this. When you put an electric lorry in, there's the cost of the electric lorry and there's the cost of the infrastructure in the yard. It's not like you can come in at the end of the day and diesel up in five minutes. Imagine if you've got like 10, 15 of them. You need a charging point for every single one of them. But you're right, it is expensive with diesel and it is expensive with the chargers going into London. But the price of electric lorries need to come down and the range of the electric lorries, how far they can go, that needs to go up and the charging needs to increase as well. There's definitely a comment for the future. It's a comment for the future, definitely. but there's no point now anyway, no. because now they want you to have electric, so they just put the price of electric up. So if they don't get you one way, they'll get you another way. Why don't you just get a dirt bike or a quad bike so going around the yard would be faster and more fun? <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, oh wow yeah you've seen me ride a couple bikes in the yard yeah obviously i'm a man who can like i can control anything i could jump out of anything i'm an action hero yeah you had a motorbike at one point as well didn't you i did have a motorbike i had a gsxr 1000 in a stealth black on an 08 plate but i wasn't doing wheelies i wasn't doing endos i think back when you had your gsxr 1000 i used to endo my little prillet sr50 when i was a little 17 year old the, the trouble with that quad bike is when you're riding around on the like round the yard, it's not going to be safe. There's so much high traffic round here. A dirt bike against a loading shovel. I'd back the loading shovel, so I mean, yeah. ride around. Or maybe we could just take the loading shovels on road. Or maybe we go McDonald's takeaway and a loading shovel and see how we like, for <laughs> the drive through for the drive through and a loading <laughs> shovel. <laughs> take a Big Mac meal <laughs> with a large fries. Take out the speaker with the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Are you one of these taxi drivers that talk a lot? If you don't want to talk to me, I can be quiet. It's quite nice, like doing a little tour in the black cab, isn't it? I know. At least I have to get my trainers dirty or my car dirty for once. Where's the LH370? Why don't you put an overpass which sprays water above the trains as they reverse in? Uh, you probably suggested this before we did it, but we did do that. And now the secondary line is, is wet. But ju just to point out, in weekly, you saw there was a point when the material came in dry and dusty. That doesn't happen ever. That was an anomaly because at the quarry, their entire sprinkler system, all the pipes froze and they couldn't wet the material when it left them. And of course, on that particular day, I was stoned on either high road. Your lorries are contaminating the planet, but no one else is are, but it's all your fault. Your lorries have increased the traffic in the area. It's all you, it's not about any of the bigger firms. You don't know what you're doing. How dare you be here? And the council landed in here and everyone came in here and I was the worst person on planet Earth. So I had to put all these new sprinklers in and now the sprinklers don't even need to be on because the material turns up saturated and wet. But it's a good comment. It's it is a, a good very comment. good, idea. A good comment. Earlier in the week, I spoke about putting some sprinklers in here to dampen the material as it came off the train. Why don't you make a tyre rack for knowing which are good tyres and which are tyres need to go for scrap? This will make it easier for whoever puts your tyres on. I'm sure you can create an area for anything, trucks slash cars. We are going to make a tyre area and I believe we have a tyre fitter starting. We've got ourselves a new compressor. Tyres are massive for us, the amount of money we spend. We're just looking to bring it in-house. I have a full list of the kit that I'm going to buy, so whatever tyre fitter we have um, can manage the fleet properly. Great suggestion, AL bag of money one exclamation mark. Mm. I've put in all the tyres in one row uh, because the tyre fitter hasn't marked them, so we don't know what's good and what's scrap. Why don't you put the concrete Lego box down the side of the track? because then we'll box the train in. I'm assuming that's where we mentioned that the train operator had said that the material was getting a bit too close to the track. I'm assuming that's what they mean. Yeah. So I can see the logic, but machines moving around, they'll hit the blocks onto the tracks, so the damage train wheels. Remember this with a, with, with a concrete block. If the concrete block is not put down on a perfectly flat surface, when you go to build them up or move them, everything will just fall down and that land isn't flat and it's a bit it, it, the water pools there as well doesn't yeah. it and the land kind of dips just underneath the sleepers so we were a bit short on space there but now if you see in the yard like the bays we've built material doesn't pile out 
famous last words. Material doesn't <laughs> yeah. pile out like onto the track and it doesn't like interfere with the train in any way. GB Ralph Ray uh, came in to discuss a few operational issues, what we've got in the other yard. So we cover the yard on all sides. Uh, we walk the track, we see any potential hazards. Why don't you make something that can be put on the train tracks with a plow that can be pushed or pulled to clear the path or something like a quad or skid steer? What, but, why don't we make it? But what would be the benefit of that? I'm not entirely sure what you're referring to in episode no. 25. If you're talking about doing the weeds, yeah, that, that, that's like a gardening job. Like we could pull the weeds out in 10 minutes. I wouldn't be, what, what, you're, what you're talking about sounds like something that the A-team would go into a garage with a truck and come out with a plow on the front or something from Simpsons when Homer said, that name again is Mr. Plow. <laughs> when he had a snow plow machine, but I can't, I can't think of what we would use that for and I can't see any benefit. Maybe you're talking about when we were throwing rocks back onto the pile, but building a machine that goes on the track with a plow to remove stone that took less than a minute to remove, I mean. Over, I would say it's a bit, a bit of over engineering. Thanks Craig, but. Um, uh, a bit, yeah. I'm gonna individually get the boys to pick up the rocks and stuff to stop anyone from uh, rolling their ankle. It just means that rocks falling down the pile won't go on the track and cause a derailment. Why don't you get the lorry driver that hit your car to make you lunch and breakfast meal for the rest of the week? <laughs> Who told you I wanna eat his food? <laughs> If it ain't, so so firstly, why am I being continually punished? First he's got to damage my whip, now I've got to eat his food. Like, don't you think I've been punished enough? It's not punishment for him, that'd be punishment for me. Nah, 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 the answer's not. Oh, I remember that, lad. Oh, do you? I remember that, lad, yeah. Because yeah. he left us, and then he asked me for a job back again, and he said he had a few problems and he was sorting himself out. And I said to Daniel, he's looking for a job again. And Daniel said, absolutely not. And I said, look, Let's give the man a chance. Let's give him a go again. He made a mistake and Daniel said, Terry, on your shoulders be it. And I said, all right, I'm gonna give him another go. And I give him a start and on the Monday morning, he didn't turn up. And when I tried to call him, he blocked me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm gonna strike that off as an L on my part. And so I should have just listened to Daniel. <laughs> the man got a job and came in the, in the yard and decided to try right off my whip. <laughs> and then I when mean, he got a second chance, he just didn't turn up. And then he blocked, man, like you're in the wrong. <laughs> it's jokes, isn't it? I'm doing my best to stay calm, seeing as in a three acre yard, one of the drivers just reversed into the front of my car. They hit my car on their driver's side. Why what? don't you spray plaster it? Spray plaster, Spray plaster episode what? 24. Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but thinking of the build work we've been doing, all the jobs, I'm gonna be honest with you, spray plaster is not something that we've ever done. So we're at old school, a man with a trowel, multi-finish, mix it up, and so we've never done any spray plaster work, so I can't comment, but something that else was new to us, people spraying when they're painting, like that's something we started doing now as well, so maybe it's something we can look at in the future. I don't know enough about that to comment on it, so mm. I'm going to keep my uh, opinions to myself. Oh, that's the first time I've ever <laughs> did it. There. Why don't you have a football team? You could call it Asheville United. Oh my word, mate! I got enough problems going watching QPR at the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Like n now, I got to go and have my own football team. Like, can you make like it just? That's all I need. A bunch of fellas not turning up on Saturday as well. <laughs> That's all I need. A bunch of fellas losing their football boots and their uniform, <laughs> playing out of position. I can't find my socks. I can't find my socks, Dan. I have enough responsibility now. We won't be having no team called Asheville, you know, and they definitely wouldn't be called United at the end of it, you know what I mean? So they're not. Why would we be calling them United? No, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. One vibrator on the feed hopper should be sufficient. Bagging plant. I'm assuming that's about the bagging plant. Episode 88, yeah, it's got to be around the bagging plant. Yeah. Uh, one vibrator on the fit. It wouldn't be sufficient. If the sand gets wet and gets claggy in the corners, one, one vibrator is not going to be enough. If it was one big hopper, maybe it'd be all right. But if you look closely, it's actually two separate hoppers. Two separate hoppers which are divided. So they're not actually, the frame is connected, but the two of them aren't connected. So no, I don't think, even though those um, vibrators are like, far over engineered and specified. <laughs> the, like the they will shake the paint yeah, off that yeah, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> like the machine I'm building with the plow to clear the track <laughs> in, instead of picking the weeds out. It's far over specified. Anyway, 
the vibrators have arrived for the bag implant. But I think we've slightly overspec them. Suggestion that will save you money once a month. I like this already. Okay. Save money, I like this. Once Get a month. Get a retractable hose reel. When you pull out the hose and finish the job, the hose will automatically put it. You're welcome, brother. Listen, brother, let me tell you something, yeah, about this jet wash <laughs> and this. Let me tell you what they're doing you to me welcome, in this yard. Brother. Let me tell you what they're doing to me in this yard, yeah? I used to have the wizard head on it, the one in Day in the Life. And they used to use the wizard head when I'm not meant to and cut the lorries in half and take the paint off it. So I had to hide the wizard head. In fact, we put it on the pump. And now the reel, they pulled it out so far, it won't go back in. And once a week, somebody runs over it. And then the water sprays out of it when they're using it and people get wet. Do you know what Terry does? I said, Terry, you know the hose is leaking? He said, I don't care, Dan. <laughs> Leave it. Let whoever ran over it get wet. That's their own business. Until everybody gets a soak in, it doesn't get changed because that's the only way people are going to learn. So and then we changed we it. We did have a retractable hose reel and they broke it. We had a lot of things here that just get broken <laughs> and just no one cares. Burby Wolf, in an ideal world, it's a perfect suggestion, but unfortunately, we do not live in an ideal Maybe world. Maybe we would employ someone to wind up the hose, the same, <laughs> but that, the winding up hose department next to the washing lorry department. I think we're going to, yeah. The winding up hose manager. Yeah, the winding up hose manager who needs to employ a, a PA. <laughs> I think we're going to do that. This is not working, the cop, like. They probably attached it to a lorry and tried to drive around the yard with it. Could you set up a rainwater harvesting system? You can, yeah. I mean, it's definitely, but we don't have a roof in the yard to catch the rain. Mm. If we own this yard and we concrete it, concreted the whole yard and we were catching rainwater, like you can hear outside now, we would seriously look at har harvesting rainwater and reusing it, but we're not in a position to do it at the moment. And as someone rightly pointed out, we don't have any buildings because we have containers. So <laughs> we just let the water come inside the containers. And when people break the windows on the lorries, we just let the it's water- It's probably only certain uses lorries. for the yeah. rainwater as well. I wouldn't use the rainwater for concrete because it's got to be clean water. Terry would just use the rainwater to shower. It would probably affect the uh, curing of the concrete or something, but it's a good green eco uh, Sorry, idea. just going back. It says underneath gallons of gallons of, of free water. My friend, it is not free. <laughs> I got to put all the money in beforehand. Yes. And then I need a manager to manage it. <laughs> and then I need to manage him. And then I probably need to put six cameras over there. And then someone's going to run over something. And then you're going to micromanage it. And then I got to <laughs> micromanage it. Ugh, the, my friend, it is not free. Ian Bradley, nothing is free. Let's go and check the water. It's definitely still filling. I just realized that Ollie's put a hose pipe in this because the water has run out already. Yeah, we've got a problem on our hands. Insulate the pipework running to the base to prevent freezing. You're talking about the um, blue plastic pipe you've seen around the back. Yeah, mate, do you know what? You are right. Uh, we should put some lagging on that pipe because when it does get to minus temperatures here, the water could well freeze. But what we do when we know there's going to be a... F no, 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 sorry. Not what we do. What, we what we're do. meant to do. <laughs> sorry, there's a big difference. We turn off the feed for the water coming in and then we open all the pipes so that the pipes where the water goes to the sprinkler system, so there's no water left in it, we completely empty it and we turn off the feed going to it so the pipes don't get damaged. That's what we're meant to do. But of course, we're not going to do that. We're going to let water fill up in all the pipes. We're going to let all the pipes get damaged and then nobody's going to know who did it, Dan, and then I must pay to replace it. going to blow the top off all the sprinkler heads. Right? Blow the top <laughs> off the spr sprinklers. Everything's going to be my fault. Yes. A little bit more about the sprinklers. We don't have the water pressure in here for us to be blasting all of them at the same time. So the easiest way to do it would be to run one pipe to each of them and then just cap off and put one above each, but that's not gonna work. Daniel, why don't you buy a recovery? Give me that crutch. Where's the crutch? <laughs> Give me this. I don't buy a recovery lorry cause they're 500,000 <laughs> pounds. We but why don't I buy a recovery? Hey, Gary, <laughs> Cooper, bro. Like, why don't I buy a recovery? Like, yeah, man, just gonna buy a recovery lorry, half a bar, and minor. Oh. I don't buy a recovery lorry because I'm not in the... Are you suggesting that my lorries break down every day yeah. or that I should go into a new business? Like, I don't buy them because they cost half a million pound to have a good one. So, like, Gary, Mr. Cooper, yeah? 
please. We know somebody who's going up to Doncaster on a flatbed to drop off a machine and it just so happens that is round the corner from where the flatbed is. So they're gonna put the flatbed on and bring it back. Why don't you have a bridge <laughs> so it would go across to the other office? Do you know why I don't have a bridge that goes to the other office? Because I'm gonna get in my car and drive to Heathrow and skydive out the plane to get into the other office because that would probably be cheaper. I am not building a bridge from this <laughs> office to the... <laughs> Just build a bridge. Build a bridge. Like, I mean, like... Yes. Just I mean, have bridges everywhere. No, nah, I mean, no, nah, I'm not doing... Why? why? Why am I doing that? Darren, Darren Newbold, please, mate. No, no, and, and who like this? Three people are like, what are you liking it for? Unlike it. If you like that comment, go back and unlike it. I'm not building a bridge. There's no need to have a bridge there. And it just makes it easier for people to get to my office as well. <laughs> I don't want people to come to my office. It makes it easier for Daniel to come across to see us as well. We yeah, mate, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh. So the platform is 2.5, but then I have to work out the stairs. So if I measure here, let's measure 3.3 to see how far out our stairs are going to go. Can you try to grab it, Wilson? So, okay, so I'm assuming that this person wrote a letter and this is the bottom of the letter. P.S. Why don't you employ someone, okay, on a weekly basis to grease your equipment? Surely it would save on driver hours and pressure and pressures. Just a little advice. P.S. This shouldn't this be P.P.S. afterwards. Love your weeklies. All right, listen, X Files Inc. The reason I don't do that is because of the people who work here should be doing that when they're looking after it. You see this new school way of thinking that I will turn up and drive something and destroy it and I don't have to look after anything and I don't have to grease my grab bucket and the fitter should do it, the mechanic should do it, everyone should do it, but I should get paid more money. I should get more and more and do less and less. It's nonsense. It doesn't work like that. That's not what you do. You have to look after your machinery yourself. And there are people in the yard who work in the yard full time who are trained to do it as well. So if it's not getting done, it's just neglect. It's the only reason. And when I employ this new person to do it, what else are they gonna do? Other than grease Terry's hip. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it, we pay them six days a week to do. Six days a week Sit to there, grease. So what they can day. do is in the week, they can check how much grease we have. They can report on the amount of grease. They can report on the grease nipples, the snap-on grease gun. What they'll probably lose, that's a favorite thing in the yard. Leave the snap-on grease gun in the middle of the yard so a man can run over it in a truck and say, nobody knows what happened, Dan. No one knows who did it then. Yeah. So, uh, no, we won't be employing anyone. We can't just keep making up job roles because people won't do the job that they've got. <laughs> We're doing a bit of greasing on the baby grab because it's not out at the moment. Greasing the crane. Now the body itself has one of those auto greasing system that goes to all the working wearing parts, but the crane you have to do manually. Hey, why don't you use two telehanders facing each other to get the material through the tunnel? One drops the load in the middle or one picks it up halfway through the tunnel. I don't really like using telehandlers to move material. We used to use telehandlers to load the volumetric and what happens at Asheville and many businesses like that, you can use a telehandler to move material, but if there's a pile of material, people have to drive into the pile of material at full bore and smash <laughs> into the material so the back wheels lift off the ground and then they have to, they have to take as much material or muck as they possibly can. And then when they flick the bucket out, when they're dropping it somewhere, they have to flick it more than they need to and bang it at the bottom and go bang, 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 bang. And they have to do that repeatedly. So the telehandlers don't last very long and people don't want to pay. Why don't you have a bottom discharge base um, added under the tracks with a conveyor system to offload? It would be quicker and more cost effective that, than running an L860 probably costs a few quid to get it implemented, but in the long run, it would save you. The history of this yard, this yard used to be a coal yard, a coal yard or an asphalt plant a very long time ago, and there was in fact a bottom discharge unit set up here. The trouble is at this yard, you back in with a train and then you drive back out the way you came. If somebody has a bottom discharge unit, every wagon would have to go over that bottom discharge unit at some point. You can't move 
a bottom discharge unit around is buried into the ground and then you would have conveyors and that conveyor needs to take it to somewhere else and as we don't have an asphalt plant or anything like that it, it wouldn't work so the LH60 is a lot more versatile and in this case reliable and it's the only option we could really have as a material handler can't have bottom discharge in here because it won't work mate the application doesn't suit i said not to offload a train because it might get derailed yeah and the train could get stuck here and we could get a 20 grand fine so you can see we managed to get an operator in the end everything going down to the wire which is absolutely terrible for my anxiety levels you should be able to charge gbrf for leaving their train in your yard for that long listen dom <laughs> we would love to be able to. We, let me explain something to you. Yeah? There's a lot of people who do us dirty and there's a lot of people we'd like to charge and there's a lot of people we'd like to sting if we could. My friends at GB Rail Freight, yeah. they are not like that. They are not one of them. GB Rail Freight are good guys, man. Like they, They've always been good to us. They've always looked after us. They've always been accommodating. If we win it, you can have a free train. Don't you? Hey! Hey! Did you hear that? So, we wouldn't do that to GB Rail Freight. We wouldn't do that to Mike. We wouldn't do that to John Smith. It's enough for John Smith that Sunderland are now in the championship and we're going to turn them over at QPR. And the man, <laughs> the man is going to be crying for a week <laughs> after we turn Sunderland over and he's coming to the game. So, we would never treat GB Rail Freight like that. They're very accommodating to us. But now they've left the train and the loco. And I'm not sure when the loco's going. But I'll have to keep checking for him and checking on the cameras because I want GB Rail Freight phoning me saying Someone's nicked our loco. Asheville trucks should have names on them to make spotting them interested, not just a number plate. They do, they have Asheville. <laughs> <laughs> we could name a lorry like Tezza or something like that. And nah, somebody could say, somebody could say so. I saw Tezza. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think people are too, too excited about that. <laughs> I mean, do, do you know what we could do? We could number the trucks. But do you know why I never wanted to number my trucks? because then it made it look like I had less trucks. <laughs> you know, sometimes you see people on the side of their truck and it says- Stops at four. Yeah. <laughs> but if I start numbering my trucks and you see the same truck, five every day, five, four, seven, two, it makes it look like we ain't got a lot of trucks. Now, I don't, I don't think we'll be doing that. I think we're gonna have to stick with the number plates for now. That's but, somebody else's gig as well. Yeah, that's somebody else's that's gig. That's somebody but, else's gig. But it's a nice, it's a nice suggestion. It's it a, is a nice suggestion. And if you are taking pictures of trucks, keep doing it. We love it when people take pictures of the trucks and send it to us. Don't know if you have this in this part of the world, but you should invest in a truck and dog setup, not an eight wheeler. They have a 48 and a half ton spec and carry a payload of up to 34 tons. Truck and dog setup, I'm guessing is, I've never heard of that. That's gotta be like an Arctic, I'm guessing. Yeah. The part of the world we're in, space is a premium. Like having to turn around trailers, like it's bad enough trying to get a rigid places, but trying to go into central London with, with, with a truck and dog, mate, we're not gonna be able to get in and out of sites. No, we're it's, not not, gonna, it's not really gonna work. I can see that you're a truck man by that suggestion. And I assume that you're from America or somewhere like that. South America, North America. Canada or Ontario, yeah, plenty we're of gonna space. Assume. You definitely need to upgrade your security. A guy shouldn't be able to just drive into your site and walk into your main office. So here we go, it's another job. So what, what jobs have we got today? So we've got the new security guy. We've got the guy in charge of winding up the hose reel. We've got the guy in charge of greasing and checking tire pressures. Yeah, and uh, we've got the guy who washes the trucks. Yeah, yeah. The guy who looks after the keys, like, so everyone's got two keys, and oh, the, guy yeah, who, yeah. the guy who remembers all the pins. Six new, new jobs we've created. So you all know, there actually is a 24-hour security guard at this site. So before you get to our yard, there's a security hut and there's 24-hour security and there's a gate at the front. So us having two security guards on the same stretch of 30-meter road. It's not the Bank of England. Yeah, it's definitely not the Bank of England. Yeah, and besides, I, got, I, got, I need to save my money for this new football team I'm starting anyway. <laughs> I don't know how they got past security, but they went into the office. Well, if you can't deal with it, then just call your boss. Then what? Call your boss. Then what? She's still recording. I'm making a response to you. What's this? A diss track? You should ask about the vibrating bodies. Does wonders making sure nothing stays in the bed. I mean, that comment is open to interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very ambiguous comment. I'm guessing that is... Uh, to do with the volumetrics, more problems, more solutions. I mean, all, all, the, all the volumetrics, they, they have, have vibrators, vibrators on the body and we've yeah. upgraded some of the vibrators because some of them are old. I assume that's what you're talking about, Matt. It's a good suggestion. 
Thank you. If you're talking about the volumetrics. Not only am I talking to different manufacturers for the chassis and cab, I'm talking to a couple of people about the bodies, seeing how specialists we can go, seeing what features they can offer, seeing um, what sort of steel they use. Do they use hard ox? How thick are their bases? I think on our current ones, what ABBA made, the bases were five mil thick. You should remove the cargo cover or add a way through. I'm going to say it. I haven't actually watched that episode, so I don't know what he's referring to. <laughs> Zany one, you've just baited me out. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I don't I'm know to what, think about that what you're talking to. about there. I don't know. Remove the cargo cover and add a way through. What cargo cover are you talking about? I don't know. I tried to fit an anaconda arm from Volvo in here the other day. I was unsuccessful, so now it's time to fit an Asheville signboard in my passenger seat. See if that fits. You should already know if Kevin needed paying or not. Bloody stupid. Get a hold of your finances. All right, okay. TARDIS edits. L Thank listen. you for your um, I support. Listen, I listen. TARDIS, your unwavered yeah. support. I listen here, mate. <laughs> listen to TARDIS, you know. <laughs> Kevin was paid long ago, and my RAM was working. All now I sold that machine, and it's gone now anyway. I harass Kevin on his holiday in Cornwall, calling down his phone like a madman because I was listening to the comments. And now I didn't learn my lesson, because here I am again. <laughs> <laughs> getting wound up by the comments. I'm getting wound up by the comments again. You're probably the one who wrote it in the first place. And I'm going to be honest with you. Why should I know that I owe Kevin money? Why should I know that? I have a finance team and I have accounting systems in place and I have people working for me. Why should I know everyone who I owe money to? Because if he did know, he'd get accused of micromanaging. Yes, <laughs> it, I micromanage, so I let them get on with it. No, so he I can't win. Just, nah. Hey, right, listen, do, do you know what? Out of all the comments I've got so far, that is my least favorite. Because of how wound up he is, it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so Ara pointed out a comment to me what said that we owe Kevin the Ram Man money. Now I thought to myself, hold on a minute, do we? I'm catching up on all these now, I have some time. Maybe you should catch up on episode 95, Tell, because yeah, you missed that. Yeah. If you still have issues with the driver's rubbish braking stuff, uh, you should assign everything to people. You can do it uh, with card readers, pins, a uh, bit of investment, but would save a few ton. Let, let me explain, when people um, work here, they sign for all their PPE, we know what trucks they drive every day. We know where the trucks are. We know exactly how much diesel they put in. They put the keys in the same place. There's procedures, there's driver handbooks. There's everything you could possibly imagine and all information is given and there's a training room. But still no one knows who did it then. It ain't gonna make a difference. It doesn't stop people saying it wasn't like that when I got it. Like we can't even, we can't even get the rubbish out the passenger foot. Well, there's Big Macs from three weeks ago, <laughs> growing eyes. And stuff like that. So like, I mean, all of these procedures and card read, and it's not realistic to say that you are gonna find people and do this and do it if they don't keep the trucks clean. As Daniel Craig says in Layer Cake to the Duke, you are joking me, it doesn't work like that. That's what Terry would do, he'd give it aspirin a headache. <laughs> <laughs> you should hire a PA. As an accountant, I have, s what? I've seen how it changed many clients' lives. Listen, mate, you're called Dr. Sharma. Mate, I'm, I don't think that you're a doctor, man. I know a couple <laughs> doctors, and I don't know any doctors who would tell me that I should hire a PA as an accountant. What, like, I, 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 I he's, saying, he's saying, as an accountant, I've seen this. Oh, okay. Oh. You're not saying hire a PA okay. as an accountant. Oh, <laughs> all right, cool, sorry. I'll be honest with you. The trouble is I haven't had time to make a, a job spec for my PA. And I think there are a number of overlaps with what my PA would do and what Vesha does and what other people do here. I think that we might be doubling up on a lot of work, but possibly when I start traveling more and I'm an international sensation. Yeah, tower, yeah. Yeah. Then I may need a PA who doesn't turn up to work and loses the keys to the car, get them. <laughs> you should get some sort of small vehicle that you can load and unload with a grab. So drivers can drive themselves back and from the services and checks. Should I These really? People, they're mad to get you to spend money. Does anyone have a suggestion that won't cost me hundreds of thousands of pounds? <laughs> you should, imagine that. 
you should get some, people don't get things, Chris, they buy them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a small vehicle that could load. Well, I mean, what? what like? A little smart car that you put in the back of the grab lorry. Chris, I can see by that marker there that you are an avid Asheville watcher. Much love that you watch all the time. But mate, I can't go spending money like that. You gotta remember, for every pound I spend, I gotta think about the return. And I gotta think about them losing the keys to that car and scratching that car and leaving rubbish in the passenger footwell. I need to think about all those things. And then do you know what happens? Everybody will think of a reason why they need to borrow that vehicle while their cars are MOT. That vehicle will never be in the yard. I can see how it would be possible with a grab, yeah? But are you suggesting that, uh, and a skip, I can see it'd be possible with a skip lorry, because we actually have put a, a car on the back of a skip lorry before. Remember that car that we took round to the scrap? Yeah, we yeah, have yeah. put a car on the back of the skip lorry. But when we take the volumetric, I'm not, I think we- Or a tipper, just tipping off a car. <laughs> I'm not sure how Scania will Scania react. Will be very happy. Do, you do you remember Knight Rider? When, when, when Knight Rider used to come out the back of the truck. So no, basically- I'm not that old. Basically, what will happen is the tipper will just drive and he'll just lift up the back and the, and the car will fall out and somebody will, and a love driver will already be driving it with their foot on the accelerator. So then it goes, it'd be a bit faster than the Furious. But no. Next week I got Tina from Scania telling me that there's a broken car in two parts in the middle of <laughs> <laughs> Blocking the whole yard. <laughs> oh man. There was that guy with the app, the geezer who used to turn up in the little monkey bike like that and then he would come and collect your car. Oh, come collect the car, yeah, if you're out. Yeah. Yeah. If you're out drinking. But yeah, I suppose he should come and work for us as well. He should do. Yeah. And if there was one of those things in the yard, uh, nah, I just, no. Unfortunately, Chris, it's not something that we're going to do. But thank you for taking the time to make the comment. Taron took AS11 HGV to Scania and they said because we didn't get there at six o'clock on the dot, they're going to keep the lorry for the day to do the taco calibration, but Ross is away. So the roll on roll off driver who was meant to take the tipper um, to go and get the air tail door fixed. He took Terry's van and when he collected Taron from Scania, brought him back. So guys, that's it. Uh, I feel like we've completed the first Asheville press conference. Did you feel like Paul Scholes in the press conference after Man United won a game? Yeah, after the Champions League final. When you basically nicked it off Bayern Munich and they all started crying. Yeah, oh. Paul Scholes didn't play in that one though. Oh, did he not? No, he didn't play, he was suspended. Oh, was he? Yeah. Must be one of those terrible tackles that he went in for. It was actually against Juventus in the semi-final. <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he took out Edgar Davids. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, um, that was a roller coaster, and it, it felt... It, it was felt, an eye-opener. And it felt good to interact with all of you. The YouTube my comments is a special place. This, what's your favourite comment? What was comment? my favourite comment? What was the one that got you really angry? This joker <laughs> about Kevin's money. <laughs> Yeah, about Kevin's money. We should just pay Kevin, to be honest. <laughs> we should pay Kevin and stop paying Terry. <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> now I'm going to investigate how I can use active noise control. I'm going to contact Bose and a couple of other people. Harmon and Carden. Yeah, Harmon and Carden. Um, and I'm going to find out how I can cancel the noise in the sky um, on the above, one. <laughs> above the yard while not dampening the noise of the um, multiple trains and aeroplanes and trucks which drive past at the same time. But guys, I just want to say, I know I laugh and I joke and Terry does the same and I get jokes about um, the staff and some of the things we do, but it is very rare. It just so happens that unfortunately you mention the negative more than you mention the positive, but I do love all the people that work here. <laughs> Why are you busting up? <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys hope you enjoyed that and sorry we couldn't read every single comment i'm just now going to do a fundraise and raise 10 million pounds for all the things that everybody said i should buy and i suggest that all of you guys get together and create a consultancy agency where you can consult on consulting for consultant's sake that's it for the comments for the first hundred episodes i look forward to more brainstorming from all of you guys and the fabulous suggestions that should come from our next hundred episodes. Of course, that you lot suggested. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see Asheville Weekly episode 100 and click here to see an Asheville video that you may not have seen before, but you should have been watching all of them. So hopefully whatever you see here, you've already watched if you are a true believer like Terry who didn't watch episode 95. For me, it'll be episode 95 that's there. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.